you're looking for some creative ways to reduce your feed costs while staying out of the feed store, stick with me. Obtaining a yield and producing no waste are two permaculture principles that can help save you a lot of money for feeding your livestock directly from your property. And it's something that I think about every day while I'm on mine. This is a planting space going on in second year. It's approximately 400 square feet. And I've been working kind of a no-till setup in this area. There's still a lot of weeds that are trying to come up and just the old crop residue from all of this corn and sunflower. And I want to get this area prepared in advance for broad forking. This is the broad fork that I use. It's made by a company called Meadow Creature. And uh, I've been really happy with this thing. I'm not affiliated in any way, but it's, it's a really good product. This is a 12 inch version. They make them up to 16 inches and their claim to fame is you can't break the thing. And I, I would concur with that. This thing is very solidly built. What I'm going to do to encourage the chickens to do what chickens do, at least to get them a head start, is I'm going to take the spilled pig food that's over here in front of my pig feeder. I'm going to sweep that up and then I'm going to disperse it out in that space. And that's going to encourage the chickens to not only scratch, but again, we're talking zero waste here. I broadcast all of that spilled pig feed over here just randomly. And then the chickens will have the opportunity to comb through here and find little pieces of corn and barley and sunflower seed. These chickens will have the opportunity to work this area over for the next couple of weeks. And I'm going to minimize the amount of feed that I give them and make them work for what food is in here. One of the ways that I'm going to encourage that is to make sure that I run the water in here every day. And what that's going to do is that's going to bring the soil life up closer to the surface. So worms and, and things like pill bugs and other invertebrates will be more readily available for these chickens to work down and to try to find. So what do you do with all them dried corn stalks? Well, I guess I could make a Halloween display out of them. Or I could pull them out, throw them on a burn pile. Or I could feed them to my animals. As I line them out and scatter them in front of the sheep tractor. And as I move the sheep tractor forward, it runs over them and then the sheep wind up consuming them and what they don't wind up eating will get collected up and then I'll take that over and make biochar out of it. This is a representation of where they've been, and this is all that's left. Another pretty effective way of obtaining a yield from crop residue is in the use of sunflower. All of this behind me is sunflower that's just naturally propagated on its own, and it no longer serves any use as far as from an aesthetic value or pollination. And the birds have had their way with all of the seeds out of those heads. Before this dies back completely, I'm going to go ahead and feed it to my sheep. And then what's left over, I'll utilize for biochar. Another pretty effective means of obtaining a yield from a perennial source here on the property are fodder trees. Right behind me are poplar trees that I planted close to 20 years ago. And this past winter, I pollarded these down to about waist height. And this is all of the growth in just the summer. Let me see if I can show you a little closer inside what we're looking at. And this is all of the growth that's come off of this in just since this winter. 
here's the top of it, and that's about just below waist height. And all this is probably now 15 feet tall. This can all be fed to sheep and cattle and other ruminants. Yeah, all of the trees along this line were planted and live staked by something no larger than what I'm holding here. Basically just cut and stuck into the ground in the wintertime in a period of dormancy. These are all cuttings that have been staked in. Here's some hybrid willow and some poplar. These are well on their way to becoming well established and soon they'll be large trees of their own. It's just a great source of perennial feed that keeps coming back year after year. Cut it down, whack it off every year, and it just keeps coming back. So I'll take a few of these canes up to the sheep and see what they think of them. And they'll go ahead and clean up pretty much all of this with the exception of the heavier woody material. And even the, the heavier, more wooded canes, they're going to start to strip off a bit of that bark as well. And what they don't eat will wind up being collected up and I'll take it over and use it for either feedstock for my biochar or I'll be using it to make biochar itself. Jethro really fancies that bark. You can see him working to strip it off right now. This is an example of what these sheep wind up doing to this fodder. This is material that was put in last night, and then I've just pulled it out this morning. But as you can see, they've stripped off all of the bark all the way down to the cambium, and then any of these smaller canes they've eaten. And they're already working on a fresh batch over here this morning. Another perennial source of energy that can be utilized and not gone to waste is these are fig trees and whatever we don't wind up utilizing for food that we're going to consume winds up falling to the ground. And rather than seeing that go to waste, I'll collect all this up and ensure that that winds up over where the sheep are at and they'll consume it and derive whatever energy they can get from all of this material that's cast itself on the ground. A good number of these trees behind me can be used for livestock fodder and these are just some of the ideas that have worked for me over the years to keep me out of the feed store. I will have some cuttings available on the website at porterhouseandteal.com once we get into the dormant period so keep checking back if that's something you're interested in. Please consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.